Hey there, internet friends, and welcome to a new thing we're doing here on That Nerdy Site, uh, a new series tentatively titled That Retro Gaming Show. Uh, I'm your host, Trevor Starkey, and yeah, we're, we're kind of launching a new uh, you know, tentative series of Let's Plays. This is kind of a pilot episode I'm sitting here recording. And uh, yeah, it's something I've wanted to do for a little while now, just kind of doing, you know, looks back at uh, at kind of games of the past, retro games, all that stuff. And since we're, you know, uh, here now in year two of that nerdy site, seemed like as good a time as any to really kind of kick something like this off. Um, I've been picking up a number of those uh, little mini handheld consoles over the years, and uh, and so I figure I've got plenty of retro games right at my disposal that I can kind of just sit down, hop into, and and kind of either revisit, um, you know, going back to my childhood, or in some cases play for the first time, because uh, I certainly have not played everything on the NES Classic or SNES Classic or the PlayStation Classic. Did they call it the Classic Two? Uh, I've even got the the Sega Gen. Genesis one, which there are a ton of things on that that I've not played. So um, the idea is just kind of, uh, you know, hopping in and uh, and and going through some of those old games. Um, I don't know necessarily yet quite what the format of this is going to look like if I'm going to just go through. Uh, obviously, we're going to dive in here today with Super Mario Brothers. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do the, uh, uh, the the NES mini first, uh, which I've got, you know, right here. There we go. Pull that up. And and I will say uh, this is so I've had this for years, but I'd never actually opened the box until sitting down to, to kind of uh, record this. And I did not realize how small it was. I had never actually pulled it out of the box to like really see it there in my hand at, at just kind of the size of it. Um, so that was, it's fun. It's so cute. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm just going to kind of dive in here, play some Super Mario Brothers. I don't quite know what the uh, the format of the show necessarily is going to be yet, um, but I think I'm just going to kind of hop in, play for a little while, see see where the game takes me, um, and kind of maybe take a trip down to memory lane. Um, Super Mario Brothers, for those that don't know, originally released in Japan on September 13th, 1985, which makes it 178 days younger than myself. Uh, I was born in March of 1985, uh, and... The like at least Wikipedia uh, doesn't have a concrete North American release date. It just says late 1985. So I don't know if it, you know, came out here, um, uh, kind of that holiday season or what. And and I, I honestly would guarantee that my family did not have it. You know, that first year I was alive. Um, but I have you know memories of playing it fairly young probably three or four something like that my dad i think picked up um a, a nintendo and kind of brought it home from the swap meet and uh and we would play we would sit around and play games like this as a family so uh so yeah let's uh, kind of dive right on in here uh, and see how how bad i am at super mario brothers um i at least vaguely um played uh or i played a little bit of um the super mario brothers 35 battle royale um that just came to switch recently so at least some of this is going to be a little familiar and comfortable but um i'm probably not going to be great just you know fair warning i'm not all that great at games uh so we're just gonna you know have some fun see where it goes um jump on some goombas here like i said i I definitely grew up playing this. It's not my first and earliest gaming memories. Um, I talked about this on a podcast with Logan not too long ago, I think. Um, I think we did kind of like childhood memories on one of the episodes of That News You Care About. Uh, and my first earliest memories are with our uh, Atari. My, my family, my dad had a, an Atari 2600, um, and I vividly remember like playing pitfall and stuff like that um probably even some like uh um some pac-man and, and and the like um but then of course you know as soon as the nintendo comes into the picture it really kind of takes dominance over the over the family and stuff um it was something that obviously with mario here being a two-player game um me and my sister could play together um, again, she would have been, she was two years younger than me, so, um, we probably weren't really playing until, I don't know, 89, 90 even, maybe, um, 
but yeah, we, uh, my dad worked at the swap meet here in, uh, in Phoenix park and swap on the weekends. Uh, he kind of would take people's pictures in a, uh, he had a little, uh, a trailer kind of business, um, uh, that, that he had called photogenics and he would take people's pictures and put them on shirts and, and mugs and calendars and stuff like that. And, uh, and because he was down there at the swap meet every weekend, he would, you know, do some bargain hunting and find some deals and stuff. And, uh, and so, yeah, one day he kind of came home, uh, either, either, I mean, some of it's, it's 35 years ago, so I don't quite remember the details. Uh, so I might, I might have some things mixed up, but, um, he either came home, uh, and, uh, um, and uh, uh, with the game, like on a on a, just a random weekend, and we and we suddenly had a Nintendo uh, along with you know a handful of games, or he may have saved it for Christmas. Um, I don't, I, do, I honestly don't remember because I'm old and do not have uh, the the most uh, concrete of memories. But I do remember playing this and stuff like Tetris um, with uh, with like the whole family kind of gathered around our big screen TV in uh, in our game room growing up. Um, and just having a great old time. Um, like even my mom would play with us uh, occasionally. Maybe not Mario as much, but certainly like Tetris and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just good, good memories. Um, and and really kind of cemented that gaming was going to be a thing that I was going to you know enjoy and want to do. Um, uh, and and here we are all these years later, and I'm still you know playing and, and having a great time with. Uh, you know, with Mario, with with any number of characters that have come since, because um, uh, while the um, while the Atari, uh, well, there I died. It was only a matter of time. Uh, while the Atari was uh, was certainly my first system, um, this in it, it it was you know it predated me in the family. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure my dad had the Atari before I was you know born, or, and definitely before I was doing any kind of gaming or anything like that. Um, so, uh, and it was, it was a sad day. I like, I was cognitive enough to remember us selling off the Atari at a, uh, at a yard sale. Like, I remember that being a thing. Could jump up over there, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of play through the game casually. See, we'll see how far we go. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I remember us selling off the Atari and, and like all these years later, I, I look back and I'm like, I, I wish we hadn't because I've become, you know, somewhat of a, a collector and stuff. And I, I have kept pretty much every other system uh, that I have. And I've gone out and, you know, purchased things like this, the NES Classic here, um, time and time again and stuff. So um, just kind of, uh, it would have been, it would be nice to have, to still have that uh, that original Atari that we had as a, as a family and, and the handful of games we had for it. Um, I don't think we ever had E.T. Um, I don't remember that being, you know, I, I never really watched E.T. growing up. So uh, so it wasn't really like a staple until realizing, you know, um, years later, it's it's, you know, place in iconic video game history um, uh, as the Atari. Um, yeah, um, the, the the Nintendo was kind of a, a nice little staple. And again, uh, it was certainly like. I was probably the primary player in the in the family, but um, especially in those early years with the early systems, my dad would play a ton with me. Probably up through like the, I mean, I definitely remember like we would play we would play a handful of games and stuff up through the N sixty four at least, um, and uh, yeah, just kind of like that's a that's a good memories growing up with uh, with the Nintendos um, and, and playing stuff like Mario here. Um, I. Uh, I remember specifically there was a, a period I went back to Mario here. Um, God, this would have been 15 years ago now, probably, um, with a, a college girlfriend of mine, basically. Um, uh, she, I don't remember even why she had a Nintendo, or or maybe it was maybe it was my Nintendo. I guess it might have been my Nintendo. Um, so another you know great Nintendo memory, kind of um, uh, kind of rolling it back a little bit, is. Um, so my mom's side of the family is all here in Phoenix, um, uh, pretty much. My, my grandmother was and my aunt um, on my mom's side. Um, whereas uh, my dad's side of the family, most of them lived back in, uh, in like Michigan and stuff. Um, so uh, we didn't really get to see them all that much growing up. We would take, you know, the occasional big family trips back there and see everybody. 
uh, and my grandmother back there on my dad's side, so my dad's mom, um, she had a Nintendo. And when we would go and visit her in like, you know, early 90s kind of stuff, we would like hang out in her little Michigan basement um, in uh, Grand Rapids, I think, um, and we would play uh, Nintendo games. Um, and when her eyesight really started to just kind of get to the point um, and her health really started to fade where she couldn't really manage too well on her own in that that you know tri-level house that she had and had been pretty much living all uh in by herself for a handful of years at that point um i'm gonna say it was 2005 maybe um that my dad and i took a road trip back to michigan to help her kind of pack up her house and uh and in doing so i kind of inherited her her nintendo because she wasn't able to play it anymore um, so I picked up her Nintendo, and I still have it. Uh, I'm looking right at it over my, uh, my little entertainment center over uh, over that way. Um, uh, and, and, yeah, it's uh, like I, I basically, you know, have these fond memories of playing uh, with my grandmother at, uh, on her Nintendo in her little basement when we would go over there for, like, you know, summer vacation and stuff uh, and, and spend some time with the, the Back East family. Um, and so I'm pretty sure when... Um, you know, when I brought that back, um, uh, with my, uh, uh, we, we ended up booting it up at my, uh, my then girlfriend's house or apartment. Um, and, uh, and just kind of, we, like she and I sat down and decided we were going to do that thing where like you take turns and, um, you know, every time, uh, uh, every time you die is when we would like to trade off. And, and it ended up being something kind of like this, where I just kind of like, I ended up playing through like half the game. Um, in in like one life um, and then like sh when I would finally die she would kind of take over um, and obviously I know I died you know earlier or whatever but um, when she would take over actually maybe we do maybe we're, we, were, we were playing like the two-player mode um, and so like it was you know I was playing Mario or she was playing Mario maybe and I was playing Luigi whatever it was um, but like I uh like I just ended up playing through like half the game. She was like, "I I hate this." I'm like, "Why are you still so good at this game?" I was like, "I have no idea. I've not played it in many many years at that point." Um, but yeah, some things just kind of stuck with me, and uh, and so I have like that little fun set of memories tied to this series as well. Um, just, yeah, like, lovely kind of revisiting the game over the years. Obviously, again, it's been re-released on like every freaking Nintendo console, so. Um, I'm sure at some points, you know, I had picked it back up and played it on, you know, various other things. Um, but until, I think until, uh, until like the, the Switch release recently, I don't think I'd ever really played, uh, the Super Mario All-Stars version of it. Because we already had, like, all the games, um, uh, on the, uh, on, on the NES. So, they're, like, we kind of looked at it at the Super Mario All-Stars version for Super Nintendo and we're like, there's no point in and trying to pick that game up and and, uh, and spend any time with that. Like, we already have all those games. Why would we need to rebuy all those games? Fast forward all these years later, and I just bought and hated my time with uh, 3D Mario All-Stars because um, I just don't think those games hold up all that great. That's that's my opinion. And, uh, and you know, many people probably think I'm dumb for that, but whatever. Uh, I think camera controls and stuff have gotten just so much better in the last 20 years compared to Super Mario 64. It doesn't take away from Mario 64 being the iconic and the, the you know, important game that it was. And here I am, I'm talking shit about Mario 64, so of course I'm going to die. Uh, but it was, you know, great for what it was at the time. But doing a, you know, a re-release of that game in 2020 here, you could have gone ahead and smoothed out the, the camera controls and, and stuff like that. I'm, that's that's kind of like my belief on the, on the thing. Um... So anyway, just some some food for thought as I, you know, I always hated these levels. This is probably why I would always like skip through stuff because I always hated the fish coming up from like below and not really being able to like anticipate where they were coming from. I was always like, oh God, ah, flying fish. Eep. You guys are supposed to be down in the water. Why are you jumping out here? And why can you jump higher than freaking Mario? That's like his whole thing. I kind of want to play, like, a Mario Maker level 
like as a fish. I don't think you can do that. I, don't I never really got into Mario Maker all that much, but that seems like something you should be able to do. Just like hop in and, and switch it up and you're gonna play as a fish. <laughs> and I completely botched that jump. Anyway, yeah, I like, I, and it's weird even like playing through it this way, um, going the long way around effectively, because I, I definitely got to a point where like I just kind of use those, you know, those, those warp pipes um, at the end of the levels all the time at the end of the, the underworld, uh, underground worlds and stuff um, to just skip ahead. Oh, man. So much of this stuff is just, like, iconic, just remembering, like, the the music and all this kind of stuff. Like, it's it's so ingrained in my childhood. Oh, and... Womp womp. And, and even platforming, like platforming just should feel like Mario or or if it's not going to feel like Mario, it has to like, you know, be enough of a, <laughs> why did I do that? That was dumb. Has to be enough of a difference. Oh, and there's my game over. Womp, 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 womp. All right. I, <laughs> I did not anticipate that happening. Uh, yeah, I guess now I'll, 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 we'll jump ahead to... Uh, to that that first little section. I mean, I could probably have just called it there and been like, "All right, well, I guess that's gonna do it for this. Let's play." And there we go. That's I am. I should not be talking. I guess it's probably like what happens here. I, I'm just not. I can't focus. I can't focus when I'm talking to you, the audience. Um, <laughs> and I say that as if I'm going to have an audience. There's going to be like three people who watch this video, and one of them is going to be my mom. So hi, mom. Love you. Thanks for watching. And thanks for letting me play video games as much as you did growing up so I could, you know, do this dumb stuff now and just kind of sit in front of, <laughs> like, my own little computer here playing, uh, playing my NES Mini, recording videos and putting them on YouTube. All right. Hop back into the underworld here. dun 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 Get some points. It's even weird. Like <laughs> I, I don't even think about it, but I'm like, why am I even bothering to get points? Why is points a thing? Because, obviously, like, this isn't an arcade game. I guess I guess maybe there was maybe a brief element where it was, like, trying to get, um, uh, trying to get, you know, more points than my sister or my dad or something like that growing up, but, you know, God, if I really cared. <laughs> Yeah, like just points and lives are such like a holdover from the arcade days where you were trying to like just milk money out of people. This is fun little time capsule. I'm recording this the day uh, I kind of uh, ruffled some feathers on Twitter by you know once again saying that Dark Souls should have you know an easy mode and stuff like that. And a whole bunch of people got like super pissed at me, and and like I look back at a game like this, I'm like, yeah, it's not like, I mean, this game has, I guess, no easy mode really, um, so to speak. But you know, we also had Game Genie and stuff at the time, <laughs> and I could you know create a whole bunch of lives if I really wanted to or something like that. Um, we could skip you know ahead to different worlds like this. Um, And, and for the record, you know, of, of course, you know, game developers are free to do whatever they want, but I think it's, you know, a bad choice that the people at, like, uh, at FromSoft don't, aren't interested in having more people play and experience their games because they're so, you know, strict and rigid with the, um, the brutal difficulty mindset of their games. And have that, you know, 
There are plenty of people who played Doom Eternal on you know, the hardest modes possible or whatever. Didn't stop them from putting in a baby-ass baby mode. school um we would play a uh, in in band um there was like they had like a little hierarchy kind of system the band teacher did while i was uh, in there uh, and it was basically like hey you know um you can you can be a different level in the band um uh, you know if you if you know your scales and you play your scales you know you can do you can get to this level um uh if you play you know uh, uh you know etudes or whatever like there was like there's just a whole bunch of like if you do these things we will you know you can get rewarded by certain things or with certain things and there was like the top tier if you wanted to be like the the you know vanguard member of the band or whatever the the concert band um it was uh at a concert you would like once you'd done everything else um you had to play uh play a solo and i did everything to get to that level but i never ended up playing a solo and it wasn't until, like, years later or something where I thought to myself, man, I should have put together a Nintendo medley and played that on xylophone. I could have, like, I could have played Mario and Tetris and, and, uh, and like, The Legend of Zelda and kind of combined all of them together, played them on the xylophone, because I was a percussionist in, uh, in school. Um, so I played a little bit at all the drum, uh, all the percussive instruments, you know, snare drum, bass drum, but then also marimba and... Uh, and timpani and that kind of stuff and i was one of the few um uh in the band uh, one of the few drummers in the band that like was interested in playing all those other things um because so much of you know band at that time was like marching band and uh you know if you're on the snare line like that's you know the coolest thing to do is be on the snare line um, and I was, but I also really enjoyed being able to read music and, and play the other, you know, aspects of musical instruments. Um, and it helped because so many other people didn't want to do that or didn't care about that. Um, but yeah, so I, I, like, I often think back like, oh man, it would have been really cool if I had done a, um, like had done a solo of video game music in, you know, 2003 or something like that, 2002, 2003, whatever it was, um, in a pre-YouTube world, I guarantee my mom would have videotaped the thing because um, she recorded all that stuff, um, and uh, and it would have been, you know, I, I, it would have been something that as soon as YouTube came around and I started seeing all of those kinds of like videos popping up of you know kids playing nerdy things, um, I would have been like, oh, hey mom, let's can we figure out how to digitize this and I can upload it to YouTube, and uh, you know maybe it would have gone viral, you know. 10 years ago who knows probably not but a boy can have a pathetic dream about going viral playing nintendo music uh while while playing a uh, a nintendo let's play here in the year 2020 ah good times all right goodbye bowser slash not bowser because what all these all these guys are the imposters and it's not until the end that you get like the real bowser it's been so long since I've actually like paid attention to the quote unquote lore. But hey, there we go. World four one. Go. Ah. Ah, screw you, Locker Two. Go back to busting out your camera and following us around the track in Mario in Mario Kart or in Mario sixty four. Fix your camera crap in that. Yep, there we go. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Trying to see if I can get up into his cloud. But maybe doing that when you're a little one hit. Almost dead Mario, isn't the best idea. There we go. 
and that might make this a little easier. Oh, that's right, you can't get into his cloud in this one. That was a later thing. And the jackass is gonna come back here at some point, isn't he? Yeah, there he is. Die, Spiny. Oh, you didn't die. Boo. Reminded me in uh, in college, I was with a uh, sketch comedy troupe uh, at ASU called Farce the the Farce Side Farce Side um, uh, Sketch Comedy Hour, and we would perform every uh, every Friday in the in the Memorial Union on campus. Um, and I I was never actually a, a cast member of the the troupe, but I ran their tech for a year and a half or so, and uh, and I would, I would write sketches and stuff for them. Those you know, one of my first forays actually into doing any kind of like writing. And, uh, and one of my favorite sketches that we ever did was, uh, what it was called, I think flashbacks or something like that. And, uh, and it was basically a tale of two family members. There was the, the grandfather that, um, you know, would wake up from some PTSD flashbacks, um, of fighting in, you know, Korea or Vietnam or something like that. And we would, we, we kind of, like, did a whole sequence of, you know, scenes that he kind of freaked out about in, in flashback on. And then, like, when the kid, you know, wakes him up and is like, it's okay, Grandpa, it's okay, what do you, like, it's okay, you're fine, you're fine. Um, dang it. Um, the kid, like, the second half of the sketch was the kid having, um, uh, flashbacks to video game stuff of, of you know his past and uh, and like the the Tetris block would come out and uh, and it would be the the like one of the s-shaped blocks or something and and he'd be like ah ha ha I don't go anywhere ha 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 and the kid would freak out about it and uh, um, and uh, I guess I didn't need to skip ahead like that but whatever um uh we had like uh, other you know flashbacks that he had were uh he fought uh ryu from street fighter and uh we we basically got like a blue dodgeball i think or something like that and uh basically like threw that out as a as a hadouken um uh and at some point um mario came out uh and it was it was Mario Bros. Mario, um, so with Donkey Kong and stuff, and uh, or, or I guess Donkey Kong, I guess Donkey Kong Mario, Jumpman, um, and uh, and Mario got the hammer, and uh, and the reason I like I bring this up and think about it is because um, we weren't the most technologically savvy, uh, even though I was like running tech. I would do occasional sound cues and stuff and music, but we didn't have like the music cues for all these like. Um, video game things so uh instead of uh instead of playing any of that stuff um i was sitting off stage um running music for any of the sound cues we did actually have but like when we got to the hammer and stuff um i uh, <laughs> um i just kind of like into a microphone was like um and then, like I, you know, I think we had the star at one point as well. And I was like, D I did this. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> and uh, and yet it was one of my one of the favorite sketches I ever got to do uh, while working with them. And uh, it was a ton of fun. We did it for like a big anniversary show a couple years later or something. I came back and, and helped out with it. And and yeah, good good memories um, playing all that video game stuff. And I think with that death, that's a good place to uh, to wrap up this first installment here of. Uh, that retro gaming show uh, uh, yeah I, I've been your host Trevor Starkey thank you for joining me you can follow me at Trevor J Starkey on Twitter uh, you can follow all of us over at that nerdy site and all the latest that we're doing at that nerdy site at that nerdy site.com or at that nerdy site on Twitter 
or here on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash that nerdy site. Um, if you're able to support us over on Patreon, we're at patreon.com slash that nerdy site. You can support us over there. We would definitely appreciate it. It helps kind of keep the lights on, pay all the podcast feeds, and, and pay for the, the annual kind of website stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know, I guess, if you have any great Super Mario Brother memories um, in uh, in your past in your history um, or if you know you're one of the many many people i met through the kind of funny community and are just you know 20 something and never even sat down and played super mario brothers because you're not an old fogey like myself let me know all that as well um yeah as always stay nerdy and be good to each other <laughs>